welcome along to Obsession Engineering. Today I have to get from Aberdeen back to the wonders of Lincoln. I could have just flown, but I decided instead that I'd bring you an excellent product review. But today I'm not on a bike, today I'm in a car. As you may know, here at Obsession Engineering we love Exotica. We love the fast and the exciting, and that's exactly what we've got today. Oh, oh no, we haven't, we've got a Ford Fiesta. But it is still fast, because it's a rental. In the professional way of motoring engineering, I don't actually know much about this car. I just went to the rental desk and said, well, I want a car. I was offered a selection of sizes and I said I'd like something quite small, because I like a quite small car. And the first thing you'll notice is, this Fiesta isn't actually that small. It has five doors. Well, it has four doors and a boot, but you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice. It's quite good spec. I've got some luggage in the back and it's sort of painted a bluey grey colour. There is boot space. I have two quite normal sized bags and they fit in there quite easily. You could probably fit at least two people's bags in there. If you're taking a whole family on holiday, it's probably going to be a little bit snug. In the other end of the car, there's an engine. It's got EcoBoost written on it and it must have a turbo buried down there somewhere because there's an intercooler at the front here. I did actually have to check, it is petrol, uh, it revs a bit, um, it doesn't go terribly fast but it is probably quite economical. And it's actually quite cold stood out here so I think it's time to go and get inside. First thing to notice in here is we've got a lovely big screen and to that I've attached my phone most of the time and it's very good, it has this Android thing that you can use to use all your apps from your phone on here and because it's a Google thing it works relatively easily and it also now knows absolutely everything about me. As with most cars it also has a steering wheel and this one has um, lots of buttons on it everywhere, it's got cruise control, it's got stuff for using that, um, it's got stuff for doing the radio but I can't actually get the radio to tune into any channels at all. It also has stalks with even more buttons on it. It's just a button fest in here. Over here we have the thing that controls the electric mirrors. What I found was it adjusts very very slowly and then the next time you look at it the mirror is in a completely different position. So who knows how that's supposed to work but I can sort of see behind me most of the time so it's okay. The gauges themselves are quite pleasant. I can scroll through um, stuff. I have no idea what driver assist is. Uh, I have navigation, but I'm using Google Maps on my thingy. Uh, there's no music, there's other things, and there's a picture of the car, because everybody needs a picture of their car in their car. I also have no key. You just have one of these things, and up here a button you press to make the engine start. And it's actually just started on its own and I have no idea why. But, you know, it's probably cleverer than me. So uh, there's lots of little cubby holes and stuff to put wallets and phones and things. A USB connection so I can charge my phone up as I'm driving along, which is useful because I'm using it all the time to use that. Yes, it's pretty good. So far I've done about an hour in the car. And one other thing I can tell you about the front seats is there's not a lot of lumbar support. They're generally fairly comfortable, they're not as hard as church pews or anything, I would just like a little bit more back support. I'm sat in the back now, and I have the seat where I would have it and I'm a bit over six foot, so it's quite far back, and I do actually still fit in the back. So unless you've got kids who are really, really tall, or you drive around with people who are six foot all the time, it's actually pretty good for space. So that's a bit odd, if you at standstill, it only revs to 4,000. There's no fun in that, is it? You're not going to impress girls in a car park with that sort of thing. But on the other side of flings, the handbrake actually works like a proper handbrake, not this silly electric nonsense. Important question number one. Is it good for sitting in the queue at KFC? Well, yes. It is a modern Fiesta. It has stop-start technology. The clutch is fairly light. The bike point's easy. The steering works. The car's relatively small. Yeah. For sitting in a queue at a KFC drive through I'd say it was pretty good. It might have cup holders, but it has no retractable table. Very poor form. Who thought it was a good idea to have a finger-licking meal with no napkins in the bag? <coughs> Idiots! So 
what's it actually like to drive? Well, so on the dual carriageway like I am now, I'm doing 70 mile an hour, I've got the cruise control on, I've got my big sat nav screen telling me where and I don't need to go anywhere, and it's pretty comfortable, I'd like a little bit more lumbar support from the seat, it's not too bad though, the rest of it's pretty good, the controls are easy, everything works, I've got my heater on, I've got music on the stereo, it is sort of standard car, yeah, it's alright. Now, the engine. I don't know how big the engine is in this. It, all I really know is it's petrol and it's got a turbo on it. I'm guessing it's not particularly big. When you're sort of cruising around KFC car parks, it's got enough go in it to almost wheel spin in the ice. When you're sat on a dual carriageway, it's okay, cruise along, it's nice and quiet. It's not exactly going to try and rip your skin off though. It's not going to like, you know, pummel your kidneys through your bum hole. It's not that fast. It sort of does what you'd expect a normal Fiesta to do, I suppose. It sort of drives forwards in a reasonable manner. I mean, faster than most Harley Davidsons, slower than most Ducatis. When I set off, it was surprisingly sunny, but it is Scotland and now it looks sort of just Scottish, I suppose. It's all gone a bit grey and miserable. Oh well, I've got the heating on, cruising along. Not exactly a difficult life. So I found a new button down by my cup holder, which I might have pressed accidentally, is a button with a chequered flag, a leaf and a snowflake on it. And apparently this can make the car go from normal mode into either eco mode or sport mode. And being the sensible motoring journalist I'm wanting to be, today at least, I'm drawing it first on eco mode. All I can really tell you so far is it's just a bit slower. I'm assuming when I put it in sport mode it might just be ever so slightly faster. Don't imagine it'll be rivaling Ferraris anytime soon, but there's only one way to find out. I had to give it a go. I had to try sport. I made sure my seatbelt was nice and tight, made sure I was sitting comfortably before I pressed the big button. Add it on, exit the first roundabout. My word, it's just a rip-snorting beast for a small petrol Fiesta. Okay, it's no GT40, but it actually made more of a difference than I expected. It was a bit more eager to rev. It felt like it wanted to pull all the way through to the limiter much better. And the limiter is actually at 6,000 RPM when you're not at standstill. It's all very good stuff. I think we'll be leaving sport mode turned on forever. Just crossing over the new fourth road bridge now. I love a good bridge, some proper solid engineering. It just looks really good, this thing. I've got the old fourth road bridge and the sort of one in the middle, well, in the middle of the two. Yeah, cracking. All we needed was a bit of sunshine and this would have been spot on. So I'm nearly three hours into my journey, got four and a half-ish hours to go. And so far I'm actually quite enjoying the little Fiesta reasonably comfortable, my back is surviving better than I thought it would, everything works, yeah, it's pretty good. There's a couple of little niggles, uh, I'd like somewhere to put my right foot when the cruise control's on, first of all problem, and um, I think it'll probably only do about 400 mile on a tank of fuel, so I am going to have to actually put petrol in it at some point. And that brings me on to a little point. So far, it's averaging just under 50 miles per gallon, and I am doing somewhere near the speed limit most of the time on dual carriageways and motorways. And I don't think 50 miles per gallon is particularly brilliant. If you had a sort of diesel engine equivalent, I'd expect probably 65, 70 miles per gallon. So all this thing where you buy a petrol car because it's cleaner, well, at cruising motorway speeds is actually not that much cleaner than a diesel and is using more fuel. So it's still using more of the world's resources. And being as I spend quite a lot of time working for the oil and gas industry, I can tell you it's not perfectly clean. Getting oil and shipping it around the world and doing all these other things to extract it from the earth isn't terribly good. So this whole drive to move everything to petrol and then eventually electric, is it actually progress? I'm not really convinced. I'm beginning to wonder about this fuel gauge because the fuel gauge says I've got 30 miles left. 
Now if it was German I would expect it to be exactly accurate so that if it said zero miles up that exact point it would stop dead out of fuel. And if it was Italian, well the fuel gauge would probably be broken so you'd just, you know, put fuel in it a little bit early or the car would break down anyway and you wouldn't worry about it. But this car's neither of those things. I'm fairly sure it's made over here somewhere. So have they left a little bit in reserve? It's a bit of a mystery. I don't really want to find out. So I've only got a couple of hours to go, just over 100 miles. I'm sat in the services at Scotch Corner and the little Fiesta is still, you know, it's still pretty good. I'm still fairly comfy. I've had some ibuprofen, which has helped my back out a little bit. Um, and generally I'm quite liking it. There's little lights in the bottom of the cup holder so you can find your cup holder in the dark, which is quite a nice touch. Um, the less good things of the engine anything below 2000 rpm it's a little bit grumbly and isn't really in its happy place so the best thing to do is drop it a couple of gears and thrash it uh, not always terribly practical on the motorway when following lorries but definitely the better way to treat the engine so it's time for some conclusions on the little fiesta because yesterday i spent over 400 miles in it and i think i got to know it fairly well the last few miles of the drive home were a little more spirited down some roads I actually know, and the car drives quite nicely. It does benefit though from actually being revved with your foot flat out, because I've done a little bit of research online, and the little EcoBoost engine is actually only one litre. And I have to be honest, when the turbo is not spinning above about 2000 RPM, it feels like one litre. Below that sort of 2000 threshold, the engine's just a bit lazy. It's not really putting any effort in, and you can feel it even on the motorways and dual carriageways. If you drop below sort of 60 mile an hour in top gear, the engine struggles and it's not brilliant. But when you've got your foot down coming off roundabouts or down a decent little back road, it revs really nicely. And actually, it's a good little engine and it's doing 50 miles per gallon on a decent run. I suspect some people might get better mileage than me but that's up to them if they want to be boring. So what do I like about it? The interior is actually really, really nice. It feels really nice quality. Nothing rattles or shakes. It's got many buttons for doing many things, most of which I understood. Um, yeah, the spec's really nice. I'd like a little bit more lumbar support in the seat, but I am quite critical on lumbar support in seats having previously made my back not the right shape. So yeah, in general, nice little car. The engine is good if you use it correctly, but these are £20,000. And I know £20,000 might be the going rate for a small car nowadays, but to me it seems like a lot of money. So if it was me spending my hard earned, what would I do? I think what I'd probably do is spend about a quarter of that and buy an older Fiesta. Or, an, or a Yaris or something like that and then I'd go and buy a really fast Ducati because that'd be more fun. Thanks for watching and join me again next time for some more important customer advice.